Fontenelle and we're here in the Cary Graphic Arts Collection. We're going to be printing on the Kelmscott Gowdy Albion Iron Hand Press. We're going to do uh, hand press printing, which actually is the earliest form of printing in the Western world that covered from 1450 to the middle of the 19th century. People were printing most materials on a hand press, whether it was made out of wood or iron, like this one here. So the first thing we have to do in order to print on a hand press is get the ink rolled out. All right, so in the past, people would have distributed ink on a printing press using these devices, which are called ink balls. So it's a piece of leather that has been stretched around wool with handles. And so you would tamp in the ink uh, reservoir and then tamp onto the surface of the press where you're printing. But we have the advantage now of using rubber rollers. And so I'm going to actually start distributing the ink here. I'm taking an ink knife to kind of smooth out some of the rough patches here. We're using a rubber-based ink, meaning that it's uh, color pigments that are suspended in uh, a kind of rubber-based vehicle. And that's a good thing because it doesn't dry very quickly. Our prints will take about two or three hours to dry. Okay, that's looking pretty good in terms of having a very even ink film without any uh, globs of ink. On the roller here. The way to ink here is when you roll into this you don't come into this reservoir uh, until you actually need it okay because you'll get a glob of ink that'll be show up on your print. So what you see here is there's these two bars right here and those are called bearer bars and they actually provide a place for the roller to sit and the reason why you would do this is that so when you roll that roller over the type form, it's completely level across the type. You need that because if I were to take just a hand roller and kind of do it like this, I'd have areas just by human nature that would be heavier ink coverage and lighter ink coverage. So this kind of ensures that you have a very even ink coverage across the entire form. And the form is what you're printing. That's the term for it. So you'll come once this way, resting on the bearers, and then turn around and come once this way. And I can see immediately that everything has been inked, and that was the first time. So I know that we are at the right level above um, the type there to just give it a kiss of the ink. These particular presses were always run by two people, and one was the person who was responsible for inking, and the other person was responsible for putting the paper on the press and pulling the lever. And so I'm gonna be the paper handler with the clean hands, and Kevin is going to be the inker who has the dirty hands. So your job will be to put the ink on, but also then just remove these little bearer strips here because we don't wanna print them. So we've inked up, and what we have to do at this point is we have to load our paper onto this framework here, which is called the tympan. And this supports the, the paper to make it completely level and even to the printing surface. And you can see there's some extra layers here that are included underneath the, the paper that I put in. And that's called packing, and that uh, evens up different areas of the type so that sometimes some might be a little lower than others and so we get an even impression and that's what the tympan helps you do. So I have a, a front guide here that I've loaded this up on and a side guide. Then I lower this kind of window frame. And this is called the frisket and what it ensures is that ink, straight ink doesn't get onto the margins of the paper. So it's kind of a protective surface 
it ensures that the paper stays close to the tympan, so we have them sandwiched in between. And also you see all this kind of foam rubber here, and that helps uh, the paper not touch the type until the last possible moment when the, the print is made. So it kind of keeps it off of the type. Um, of course, William Morris or Fred Gowdy didn't have these things. He didn't have foam wet rubber weather stripping, which is what this is to do it, but uh, in their time. But what we feel here at the Carey Collection is that we can use modern materials and practices to help us achieve the same results that Morris or Gowdy would have. Close this up onto the bed of the press where the type was, and that's the inked type. And then I will pull this handle, which is called the rounce, and I'll go right underneath here. So now the type, the paper are all underneath the impression platen here. And then very simply, the lever and see how we did. Opening it up again. Hey, that's pretty good for our first impression. So of course we're only seeing the black impression of that broadside. If we wanted another color we would have had to clean up the press entirely, put different blocks or type on, and then print again to create a second color on this print. So when people did a production run, like William Morris, to do an entire book, what would be considered was a good uh, rate of printing would be about 200 impressions an hour. So that meant that the pressmen were working constantly. So if somebody was taking paper off, the other person was inking immediately. There was no lag time. And part of the reason was, is you got paid by the print. So you wanted to make sure that you were very efficient. It's looking good. I think it has too much ink on it, actually. Okay. So maybe we shouldn't ink this time. Let's see what happens if we don't ink. And the reason why, if, and I'll show you. The reason why I think it has too much ink on it, do you see how there's a kind of haloing? It, where it looks like it's a little bit thin in the middle and then it has um, like an outline? And it's called a squeeze. So I think there's just a little bit too much ink. So let's print one without re-inking and see how we do. You can see how much different it is yeah. just by not inking. Definitely. You definitely need it. <laughs> 